Are you getting fried like a chicken in your Tesla? So in past videos, we've gone over EMF to some degree. You have electric fields, dirty electricity, the stuff running through your walls. You have magnetic fields, high power lines, circuit breakers, and you have radio wave fields, Wi-Fi, cell phones, cell towers. And we did a video maybe two or three months ago showing how now they are using the cell towers to basically fry people on the highway. And even before they set up all the cell infrastructure, being in traffic in a place like New York City is a super, super high Wi-Fi EMF environment. And the problem with these different types of fields is they are not native. They are not the fields we've been living with for the past thousands and thousands of years. Therefore, they disrupt our body in such a way, causing massive amounts of oxidative stress. Uh, I did another video titled, why non-ionizing radiation is harmful. And in that video, I basically explain the mechanism to which EMF operates. And you can just Google hypersensitivity symptoms and things like fatigue, insomnia, digestive issues, headache, are the most common problems. Uh, this is actually the reason I got those titanium plates taken out of my head. And today, we are here to answer one simple question. Are you getting fried in a Tesla more so than other cars? And this can apply to electric vehicles in general too. So we're going to, why is my neighbor yelling? Great. It's fucking, these people are fucking, I don't know, everyone's an animal now. I think it's all the Wi-Fi. This lady's crazy. She's insane. All right. Uh, so we're going to measure the levels of the electric, magnetic, and radio wave fields. Uh, the primary concern is the radio wave fields because the dirty electricity, the electric fields, as well as the magnetic fields dissipate fairly quickly. Uh, so first, we're just going to show that the levels in the car are low when the car is off. And then we're going to turn it on and take a look at everything. Uh, I know last video you guys were like, oh, Frank, your cell phone is on. We have all the cell phones off. There is no interference right now, besides my crazy neighbor. So the owner is telling me the car is never off. It's always searching for the phone signal, the Wi-Fi signal on the phone. And that means that you know we're getting some type of Wi-Fi radiation here. And you see it goes off and then it's searching to high. Uh, so this is a safe and sound classic EMF meter. Uh, this measures 650 megahertz to 10 gigahertz. Uh, so it's pretty good for just getting an idea if the levels are safe or not. It's not good for measuring specific numeric value. The reason you would want that is to identify the source if you can't see it. But obviously we know what this is right here. So normally if this car wasn't here, this would be on slight or even flashing. There'd be no interference over here. Now this is the electric and magnetic field meter. And this kind of has to be pointed at the device. So if we point this, it's about 200 for magnetic. And then electric field is fairly low. So let me give you guys an example of the magnetic field up by my circuit breaker. So it's about 500 on the magnetic and the electric is pretty low. Usually for dirty electricity, you're measuring with like a wall insert. You're not usually using a meter like this, but as you can see, the electricity level is much higher by the circuit breaker and the magnetic field gets really high sometimes. I mean, the magnetic fields aren't low over here, that's for sure, because if you just you, know, you point this over here, I mean, it's tough because, you know, we have all this, we have interference from power lines and that type of stuff. But what we'll know is, is if we start this car and we get it rolling, if this goes up. Again, I'm not too concerned about the electric field. And you guys can see here, left and right, if I'm on electric or magnetic. Uh, from a radiation level perspective, where it is right now is probably the equivalent of having a cell phone on and several feet away from you all day. Um, it's not as high as having like the cell phone next to your head on a phone call yet, but we'll see what happens when we get inside the car. So this phone's on airplane mode. Lose who's off, everything's off. And we're in the car, and it's flashing very high. Now you can tap here on the on this right here. Yeah. Turn off Wi-Fi. 
It's already off. Okay, now it's off. So now the Wi Fi is off. Alright, so, so look. Are you sure you want to turn the power off? Turn the power off. So there's a, there's a setting. Oh, you figured it out? Yeah, I turned the power off under safety and security. Nice. So, levels are still extreme. So that doesn't seem to matter. Now there's there's nothing you, else you can turn off on this car. The battery would have to be dead. Basically, yeah. So the good news is, if your Tesla's dead, it's not gonna fry you. So we hit the brake, turn this back on. N now on this Wi-Fi EMF meter, you know, we're not gonna be able to really, like, we go closer to the screen it doesn't really make a difference in whether it's flashing or not because it's still flashing over here, still flashing over here. So we're assuming there's some interference on the engine itself. So I guess we'll drive around the block and see if the electric or magnetic fields go higher from the engine. We're going to serve Frankie Boy on an oven platter for dinner tonight. <laughs> Whoa, why is it, I've never seen it flash like that before. What because is that? My phone is on now. No, the phone didn't matter. You, before the phone was on it. I what is this? This must be like some hold on, there's no way that's right. Okay, so it's extreme flashing. Maybe the Wi-Fi levels are so high I was about to break my meter. Alright, let me see. What if I turn my phone on airplane? The, the phone's not gonna matter. Because What's that? What's that sound? That means I've never had it make this sound before. Even okay. with a cell phone. And his cell phone's on airplane mode. You guys can see the cell phones on airplane mode. Okay, so so this is basically extremely high levels of Wi-Fi. Nothing. I've never measured anything this high on the Wi-Fi meter. So. Yeah. All right. So so it's supposed to. When this meter starts flashing like a nut job, that means that it's insanely high levels. I've actually never seen this before. All right, so that meter's freaking out. We don't need to see more of that. We know what's going on. See, it's not really going up with the engine. Same with the electric field. What if I floor it? I mean, you can floor it, but I don't think it's gonna make a difference. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, so you might Go ahead, yeah. a little recoil. Whoa, holy shit, stop. Oh my God, my head hurts. <laughs> what the fuck, holy shit. Turn left or straight? Oh my God, left. I'm gonna be fucking sick. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Holy shit. I need to fucking sit down. Get me out of this fucking <laughs> spaceship. <laughs> Holy shit. Left? Alright, yeah, yeah, left. So the so the electric fields are low. I should put this thing near my head. Magnetic fields. They went up a little bit when he revved the engine. The magnetic fields were lower. Yeah, let's just pull back up. Get me out of this fucking thing. God. So even without the plates in my head, I'm still a little sensitive to the radiation. I can still tell when the levels are really high, but the combination of the radiation from the engine and him revving that engine like that and going fast, holy crap. So to my understanding, the magnetic and electric field concerns in a Tesla aren't that high. It is only radio wave, which is actually the worst case scenario. I'm sure when people rev the engine, in a normal car, they don't feel the same way. So there's some type of device in this engine, and I'm sure an engineer can figure that out or tell me, that is drastically increasing the amount of radio wave fields when you rev it. Um, I mean, that's all I really have to say about this. I've kind of told a couple of personal people I know that bought a Tesla that they're cooking themselves. And I think in order to really feel the difference, you have to get like an older car that doesn't have any sort of Wi-Fi or built-in Bluetooth device, drive in that car for like an hour, and then drive in a Tesla, and you'll see the drastic difference. You have to experience the low Wi-Fi environment first, and then move yourself into the high Wi-Fi environment, and you can really tell. Uh, so thank you guys for uh, joining me today. Uh, hopefully, this can uh, crash some Tesla stock so my options can make me some money. <laughs> uh, what, what's actually probably gonna happen is that the video is not gonna get too many views and no one's gonna care, but whatever. Uh, this is something that I mentioned months and months ago and I've really been trying to find someone with a Tesla that has been willing to let me test their car. I mean, I haven't really been trying to find one too much and, and this guy 
uh, was delivering my Whole Foods order once and I said, hey, uh, are you interested? I'll pay you, you know, a couple bucks and you can come by and we could test it. So, uh, finally happened. And for most of you that don't have a Tesla, what you still want to do is make sure that there's no type of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi device in your car that is, is emitting something. Obviously, it's not as bad as this, but it could still be bad. Uh, so, I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video. Uh, let me know what you guys would like to see over the course of next week.